بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وأصلي وأسلم على المبعث رحمة للعالمين نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين وبعد Welcome to today's episode of Missing Ingredients here on Huda TV. I'm your host, Abdurrahim McCarthy. Now, today's program is going to be a special one. And we're pumped up about today's show. Because today's show, after all of the past episodes, were all introductions. And the missing ingredients were missing in the beginning. Today, we're going to start and take the first step into the actual prayer itself, inshallah tabarak wa ta'ala, by saying Allahu Akbar in the takbir. But before we do that, I want all of you to take some time after the show, inshallah, and jot down now our Facebook page, which is facebook.com slash missing ingredients. Look at our page. Send us your input on what you benefited from what we said before about the missing ingredients in our prayer and what's to come, inshallah, as well. What you've benefited. Uh, I, I, your outlook, if you think we could add some other things, and, and inshallah, like our page and send us a, anything beneficial, inshallah, that you benefit and gain from this show or something you think we should add to it in the future, inshallah. Um, also, you can keep up with me as well on my own public Facebook page and via Twitter as well, inshallah, tabarak wa ta'ala. The missing ingredients that we're missing in our prayers. We mentioned so many things as introductions, getting ourselves ready, getting us, ourselves in, in that zone. Until we come and we make that takbir. We mentioned 10 essential ingredients, which is in our life in general, that have an effect on our prayer. How we look at the prayer. We mentioned all of those. And then we mentioned six ingredients, which comes from the takbir, from the, the adhan, all the way to the takbir, where we are today, inshallah, tabarak wa ta'ala. We want to feel that feeling that the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, used to feel. The coolness of our eyes. We want to find it in our prayer. We want to be like the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when we face any trouble, any difficulties in this dunya, that we race to our prayer. We want to be like the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, where we say, uh, as he used to say to Bilal radiallahu anhu, arihna biha ya Bilal, let us relax through the prayer. We want to find this relaxation. We want to find this tranquility. We want to find this peace of heart, this peace of mind in our prayer. The sweetness of our faith, we want to find it through our prayer. But like we said, there's a condition for you to benefit from these ingredients. I can give you the ingredients, but if you don't cook them, you're not going to benefit from them. You have to take the ingredients, you have to put them in, you have to work on them, you have to cook them, you have to strive. What you put in is what you get back. If you're not going to strive to act upon these ingredients, you are not going to benefit from them. Here we are today. We're in the zone. We got ourselves ready. Now it's time for that faridah, time for that prayer. We're standing facing the qibla. Where we know how the Prophet used to pray. We know the prayer. We're there a little bit early. We've done some nawafil before the prayer. We've done all the things we need to do. We're in that zone. And we're about to go into the salat with the first movement, which is called takbiratul ihram. The first takbirah. Takbiratul ihram, the takbir is Allahu Akbar. We know that. Al-Ihram. Why is it called Al-Ihram? We're going to go into that. I'm not going to give you the answer right now. We want you to ref reflect on why it's called Takbirat Al-Ihram. Reflect on the meaning. Why is it called Al-Ihram? This Takbirah. Why is it called this? Reflect on it. The Takbir. Allahu Akbar. A reminder to you once again that Allah is greater than everything. Allah is greater than anything. Allah is greater than all of the affairs of the dunya that you're wasting your time with, that you're focusing on in your prayer. And that's why it comes throughout the prayer, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. Because if you're absent-minded, you're not paying attention, it comes again for you to pay attention, Allahu Akbar. If you drift off, you start to focus, shaitan takes control of your prayer. He's got you with his remote, and you're, you're thinking about this and about that. You're not focused on the prayer. The imam comes and says, Allahu Akbar, or you say Allahu Akbar, and it's a reminder to you, it has to snap in. SubhanAllah, I wasn't paying attention. May Allah forgive me. You go into the rule court. Huh? And then you come back, you start to pay attention, you start focusing on that rule court. You lost Al Fatiha. Shaitan took it from you. You lost what was being read in the Quran. Shaitan took it from you. But then you make that commitment when you go down to the rule court. Say, He's not going to get me again because Allahu Akbar. Allah is, is Akbar. He's the greatest in my heart. So I'm not going to let him get to me. Takbiratul Ihram. 
Why was it called Takbirat al-Ihram? Have you thought about the answer? I'm going to get you to reflect on something else. When you go for Umrah, the clothes that the brothers put on, the brothers, not the sisters, because these white clothes the sisters put on, that's not from Ihram. Huh? The state that you get into when you change your clothes and you make that intention, what is that state? They call it the state of Ihram. They call it the Malabis of Ihram, the clothes of Ihram. When you make that intention, you go over Hajj. Why is it called Ihram? Because this is the state that what was halal for you has now become haram. Talking, eating, these type of things. It's halal for you, but it's now it's come haram. You cannot do it during that. So it's called takbir to haram because you've gone from a state of the dunya into a direct connection with your Creator, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Time to focus. No time to talk. No time. You have to turn off all of the, the mobile phones like people do today, right? When you go to the masjid and the music comes on, and they ruin your prayer and they get the sin. We have to get ready for the prayer. Focus. Turn off the phone. Make the connection now with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And talking about these phones, I just want to take a second to mention that. That when you put on the ringtone, music, it's haram. Music is haram in Islam. You put on the music tone, it's haram. But when it goes off in the masjid, it becomes even more haram. And it would distract the people who are praying. And it ruins their prayers. It's even more haram. Look at all these sins you can get from having this stupid music tone. Put on a regular tone. Don't open up the door for shaitan so you get more and more sins. Harming other Muslims with these horrible tones. You have to be careful. Takbirat al-ihram. Allahu Akbar. Look throughout the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And you're going to find that this takbir, it's actually an act of worship in so many places. Not just the prayer. The prayer we see all the time, Allah Akbar, Allah Akbar. But even outside, look in the adhan, how many times we say, Allahu Akbar. In the adhan, in the iqama, when you go for hajj, when you go to throw the jamarat, you throw the stones, what do you say? Allahu Akbar. Also, in Ramadan, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when he talked about the fasting, and the ayah to the fasting in Surah Al-Baqarah, when he came to the end, he mentioned about his fasting in Ramadan, وَلِتُكَبِّرُ اللَّهُ عَلَى مَا هَدَاكُمْ وَلَعَلَّكُمْ تَشْكُرُونَ And for you to make takbir, to glorify Allah, to make takbir about the greatness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, for what He has guided you to, and perhaps that you will be thankful. Being guided to the religion of Islam, being guided to the way of the final prophet sent to all of mankind, the prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This is a great blessing that all of us have to take a stance and we have to say Allahu Akbar for it. We're thankful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah is the greatest. And we thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for having guided us to, to this. Guiding us to this prayer. So we can pray like the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So we can find the peace and tranquility that everybody is looking for. Some of the salaf, some of the early scholars of Islam. You know what they used to say? They said that if the kings and the rulers knew what we were in from Naeem, from pleasure, that they would have killed us with their swords on it. Why? Because the people of the dunya usually, and the rulers, they are people who are running behind the dunya. People want to gather from the dunya. But their hearts are not pure and they're not finding the satisfaction. They're not finding the happiness in their life. Why? Because they're not focusing on the true way to find happiness, which is through the actions. It's through the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, through the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As we mentioned in the past episodes, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala shows us very clearly the only way to, to find the pleasure in the heart and the peace in the heart is through the remembrance of Allah. It's through the remembrance of Allah. <laughs> Verily through the remembrance of Allah, the hearts find assurance. And this prayer that we're just getting into by saying Allah Akbar, we're taking that first step. This is one of the greatest ways to establish the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala himself he said, li And establish the prayer for my remembrance. Those who look for happiness in other than the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they will never find it. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala showed us the way. Whoever turns away from my remembrance, he will live a miserable life, live a difficult life. And this is the reality of those who search for happiness and other than the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This prayer 
is the greatest way, one of the greatest ways to establish the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through the total submission to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the prayer. When we look into the prayer, my dear brothers and sisters in Islam, and this takbir, we mentioned that the takbir of ihram is by saying Allahu Akbar and raising the hands. When you talk about the submission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and I want you to pay attention to this. We mentioned in the past episode when we talked about, or the past episodes talking about the description of the prayer of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that there's different ways to raise the hand. And we'll remind ourselves here so we can follow this sunnah. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when he raised his hands, we said, not putting the hands together like this, the fingers, or spreading them out too far, something in the middle. Raising them shoulder length or ear length sometimes. Do this one this time, sometime, do the other one another time. Get some flavor into, into your prayer. Do this sunnah, do that sunnah. So you can do different things. And wallahi, when you change around the sunnahs in your prayer by doing different things, it's going to help you focus. Why? Because what's happening, you're breaking the, the custom, the adah, what's become, these movements have become just customary to you. When you do the same thing each and every time, it becomes custom. But now you say, no, no, this time I'm going to follow this sunnah, I'm going to put up to my shoulder length. Next time I'm going to put up to my ear length, it, 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 to the, the, the area of my ear, in order to get a different sunnah and get more reward from changing the sunnahs. And then we mentioned putting the hand on the chest, the right hand on the left hand on the chest. And we mentioned there's different ways you can do that as well. By putting the hand on the back of the hand, like this. Or in the middle of the forearm, or towards the end of the forearm. And the Prophet said, sometimes he would grab the area here, the wrist area. And sometimes in the middle of the forearm, and sometimes towards the end of the forearm. All of these are sunnahs of the Prophet said, that we should do to change up the prayer. But here I'm going to point out something to you. And that is that a lot of people start their prayer with a lie. A lot of people will start their prayer by lying to themselves and lying to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When they say Allah Akbar, they're telling a lie. Are you sure? Are you serious? What's happening? What's going on? A Muslim telling a lie when he starts his prayer? This is the truth. Because you have two different types of people when they say Allahu Akbar. Two different types of people when they raise their hands in this takbir of ihram. The first one is the one who is focusing on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As we mentioned, it's like he's put his heart in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He realizes he's about to make that connection with his creator subhanahu wa ta'ala. With the all great. When he says Allah Akbar, he feels it. Allah Akbar. He can feel it inside when he says it. And you have the other one who's doing like a custom. Allah Akbar. Whatever. Allah Akbar. And what he's thinking about the dunya. Talking about how, inshallah, the Imam will finish quick because I have to get back to my desk. I have to get back to my dunya. I have to get back to my money. So this one, he's starting with a lie. Because it's not, it's not, Allah is, is not Akbar in his heart, not Akbar in his, in his, in his actions. Deep down in there, no doubt, a Muslim, Allah is the greatest in his heart. But now in his actions, it's not showing. Because he's starting his prayer with a lie. And I want to point out something very interesting to you. Have you ever thought about this? Have you ever thought about this movement? When the police officer comes to you, and he points his gun at you, and he says, freeze, put your hands up. What do you do? I submit. I surrender. Have you ever thought about that? Have you ever thought about actually what you're doing when you raise your hands? إِذْ قَالَ لَهُ رَبُّهُ أَسْلِمْ قَالَ أَسْلَمْتُ لِرَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ If his Lord says to him, submit, he said, I have submitted to the Lord of the worlds. You're submitting to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when you raise your hands. You're saying, I surrender. I give up to you, Allah. I leave aside the worldly affairs. And I surrender here to you, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Just like when you raise your hands. When you're surrendering. You're surrendering to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When you make this takbirah. When you make this takbirah to al-haram, this first takbir. You say, Allah Akbar, and you raise your hands. You need to remind yourself as the hands are raised. That you're submitting to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is the meaning of Islam. 
the meaning that so many of us tend to forget, the real meaning of Islam. But what is that meaning? I'm going to share it with you but right after this break, so stay tuned. We'll be right back, inshallah. It's the essence of Islam, Tawheed. Believing in the oneness of Allah. The same message that Allah sent all His prophets with since the beginning of time. La ilaha illallah. You need Tawheed. Especially at the time of distress, at the time of need. Tawheed first with Imam Kareem Abu Zayd in Ramadan only on Huda TV. <laughs> Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome back to this episode of Missing Ingredients here on Huda TV with your host, Abdurrahim McCarthy. Before the break, we reminded ourselves of the reality of raising our hands in the first takbir al ihram, the first takbir of Allah Akbar. As we raise our hands, it's a reminder to us that we are submitting to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that this submission is the meaning of the word Islam. Some people, it was very common nowadays that people would tell you that Islam means peace. Peace, brother. That's what it means. And they said it's taken from the root word Salama. But the word Salama means Salam, not Islam. The root word of Islam is Aslama. Yuslimu Islaman Fahuwa Muslimun. This is the meaning of Islam. Islam means submission to submit to the Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. To submit to Allah. Allahu Akbar. We submit to you, Allah. Total submission. This is what it means to be a Muslim. It's a great reminder. We remind ourselves, we enter into the prayer of submitting to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so we're not distracted by shaitan. And it reminds us out of the prayer how we're supposed to be as Muslims. Totally submitting to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We're being trained here by these movements, but we don't reflect on them. Submission. Submitting to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Islam is a religion of peace, meaning it brings peace. It brings tranquility to you. But it's not taken from the root word of peace. But Islam is the religion that brings you peace. It brings you peace of heart and peace of mind. Through your submission to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Submitting to Allah. As we say, Allahu Akbar. What changes? Does anything change when we say Allahu Akbar and we submit? We mention one of them. What else changes? Other things change when we submit to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we say Allah Akbar. First of all, as it came in the hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and pay attention to this, that the abd, the servant of Allah, when he stands in the prayer, إِذَا قَامْ يصلي, that his dhunub are put upon his head and upon his shoulders. And every time he makes sujood in ruku', he makes ruku' and sujood, that he bows and he prostrates to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that the sins are falling from him. Allah Akbar. What a great reminder to think of. What a great reminder to help you focus during the prayer in order to get that great reward. Because if you're not focusing, you're just doing the movement, the chicken man salat. It's going like the chicken. You're moving really quick. The turbo mode of prayer. You're not going to get this reward. When you truly submit by saying Allah Akbar, submit to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and you focus, Ya Salam, there's an opportunity for these sins. They've been put here on my shoulders, on my head, for them to just go away. Allah Akbar. What a great opportunity. There's a shaitan who is specialized. This is the other thing that changes. By the name of Khanzab, he's put there on the, he's specialized just for that row in the prayer to distract you from your prayer, to take away from your prayer. 
So you need to remind yourself as you're submitting that this evil devil, he's there, and he's going to try to take away from your prayer. You have to be prepared, be strong, so he can't steal from your prayer. Then the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in the hadith, he described as a, something the shaitan, yasruq, he takes away from your prayer, he steals from your prayer. He wants to make sure you get less reward. Don't get 100%, get 90%. Get 70, get 50, get 30, get nothing from your prayer. He's going to try to distract you. This specialized evil shaitan is there on the, on, on, on the saf, on the line waiting for you. Be prepared for him. You're entering into battle. You have to know he's going to come for you. He's coming straight for you. As Ibn Abbas, radiallahu anhumah, he mentioned, and we talked about this in the early episodes, that he's going to come, he's going to try to take from you because he wants you to go with him. He's going to go for the person who's going to be successful in the hereafter, so he won't be successful. He's going to try to attack you, attack your house, take from your salat. He's going to try to steal from you. You have to be prepared for battle. And the thing that changes when it's called takbiratul ihram, that what was halal for you has now become haram for you. This is tarbiya. This is training for the Muslim to be in all aspects of his life. And one of the wisdoms behind fasting as well is that what was halal for you becomes haram for you in your fasting. Eating, drinking, sexual relations with your, with your wife. All of these are halal for you. All of these, in fact, if you have the correct niyyah, it's ibadah to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's an act of worship. All of this halal becomes haram while you're fasting. In order to train you, to remind you as a Muslim that leaving during this time of the prayer or during the fast, leaving that which is halal, it trains you and helps you to be able to leave that which is haram during the other parts of your life. You ever focused on that? Takbiratul ihram. Have we focused on these meanings? It's halal to talk. It's halal to eat. Halal to drink, but it's haram during the prayer. So if you've left that which is halal for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, this is training you now to leave that which is haram for Allah in all aspects of your life, in every step of your life as a Muslim. Because you're submitting. You're now, as you enter into prayer, you're signing a contract to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You're swiping into work. And to this salat, remember what we told you before. What you're going to get out of it. If you go to work and you just sign in and sit there, what's going to happen? You're going to, you're going to keep that job or you're going to be fired? Or are you going to benefit from that job? Or are you going to get that raise and get more money? Or are you going to get paid at the end of the month? Obviously not. The same thing with the prayer. If you don't put anything into it, if you don't focus on it, you're not going to benefit. Go back to what we talked about in the essential degrees of the hayat of the shame, the bashfulness, the shyness in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He, he's, he's opening for you a direct connection with him. It's going to come now. We're talking the hadith about the dialogue between you and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you're reading Surah Al-Fatiha. You're just throwing that away, not, pay, not paying attention to it, not benefiting from it. And then you want the full reward for it at the end? You should be ashamed in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that you're thinking about something as you're thinking about the dunya. You're looking around. You're not focusing. You're being trained as a Muslim now. You'll be given opportunity. But are you going to waste it? We need to reflect on the meanings of the Salat. Every single movement. Every single statement has so much behind it. So deep. So heavy. But do we focus on these meanings? After we submit to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we surrender to Him saying, Allah, you are the greatest. Allahu Akbar. You are the greatest. Greater than everything. Greater than all of the affairs of the dunya. I'm submitting to you by raising my hands here now and by saying that you are the greatest. I am signing a contract to you as I enter into the prayer. We look down to the place of the sujood in a humble state. What is the meaning behind this? What do we gain from this? So much. I want you to reflect on it because we're out of time. We're going to start from this point, inshallah, in our next episode. So stay, stay tuned, inshallah. And like we mentioned before, follow up with us on our Facebook page and give us your input on this show. 
where, what you've benefited and how your prayers changed during your following of the missing ingredients. And until our next episode, Allah knows best. Allahu alam. Wa sallallahu wa sallam wa baraka ala Muhammad.